It stalked the stands and the playing field, fickle, elusive, mysterious. A bizarre force that left the 1978 Buffalo Bills swirling in a season of close encounters. The prize was never far away. One point, two points, four points, seven. In 10 of the Bills' 16 games, a touchdown or less was the arbitrator. Victory was the ambition, defeat more often the reality. Forces aside, Buffalo played with a vigor that embraced veteran and rookie alike. New players, old players, all were swept by rapids of resolve. Hungry young Buffalo runners wrote a new definition for determination. turned cracks into chasms and made the extra yard mandatory. No less motivated was the defense, which found particular delight in the enemy backfield. The force was with a flashy rookie, a man born to run and bristling to excel. Followers of the 1978 Buffalo Bills walked an emotional tightrope. A missed step could mean disaster. Moments of elation, moments of dejection, both etched the faces of Bill's faithful. The expression of Bill's coach Chuck Knox rarely changes. Knox is accustomed to winning. He has faith in his plan and in his ability to accomplish it. His tools are hard work, thorough preparation, and precise execution. He built the builds carefully, thoughtfully. The Super Bowl was 20 weeks away when Buffalo and Pittsburgh tangled in the opener. For the Steelers, it was a first step to a third world championship. The artistry of Terry Bradshaw and the elusiveness of John Stallworth put Pittsburgh comfortably in command. Trailing 21-0, the Bills found new life behind veteran quarterback Bill Munson. Ex-Steeler Frank Lewis burned his former mates, and Dennis Johnson revived a sluggish running game. Buffalo's 17-point final period fell short. The Steelers were off and winging toward a January date in Miami. Experience had rejected enthusiasm, but the resilient personality of the Bills had been established. The first close encounters loomed ahead. Rao's defense put the wraps on a jet offense, fresh from a 33-point splurge against Miami. 
Buffalo corner Charles Romes made himself the primary receiver of a New York jet pass and bolted 85 yards for a touchdown. Longest return of the season in the AFC. The Jets revived, however, to score with 50 seconds remaining and escaped a 21-20 winner. The Bills played long ball again at Miami in week three. Joe Ferguson and Frank Lewis made connections on a coast-to-coast -coast pass. The 92-yard play stood up as the NFL's longest of 78. Warming to the task, rookie runner Terry Miller cruised to his first professional touchdown. The Buffalo dilemma deepened with a seven-point loss to Miami. Three weeks into the regular season, the Bills were still empty-handed. Baltimore tuned up with a spectacular upset of the Patriots, and the stage once more seemed set for disappointment. Joe Ferguson kept the Colt defense off balance with his offensive plan. The Bills took advantage of the bewilderment for a quick 14-0 lead. Buffalo's pass master went to the head of the NFL class with his straight A performance. But Baltimore doggedly evened the issue at 14 all. Enter Curtis Brown, exit losing streak. Brown's artistic 102-yard return, the league's longest, was a special team's dream. A week later, the Buffalo defense dug in against the NFL's best running attack. Ground giant Kansas City could score only one touchdown. The Chiefs' wing T offense was no mystery to Buffalo linebackers who had obviously done their homework. It was a defensive effort worth appreciating. The Buffalo offense showed its gratitude with the most productive afternoon of the young season. Quarterback Joe Ferguson and number 81 Bob Chandler performed the major surgery on the Chiefs defense. Chandler paralyzed the chief secondary, who unwillingly donated the right corner of their end zone as a stage for the Bob Chandler show. Over four seasons, no receiver in football has matched Chandler's statistical brilliance. The Kansas City performance was typical. Seven catches, 116 yards, two touchdowns. Buffalo had victory number two for Chuck Knox. Five games, three close encounters. It was time to measure the men in Buffalo blue. Defensive line play is no nonsense, brutal work. Strength against strength. Bills fans familiar with Ben Williams, Sherman White, Mike Kadish, and Phil Dokes learn to appreciate a new young line. Tackle D. Hardison, number 74, lived up to his billing as a number two draft choice. Hardison arrived at the point of attack with fury, and his 270 pounds made a jarring impression.
Another rookie, Lucius Sanford, took matters in his own hands. Number 57 did things in a big way, leading the team in tackles, blocking a pair of field goals, and rejecting a Baltimore punt. He was also the Bills' most peerless pass rusher, personally ravaging the quarterback five times. Opponents quickly wearied of trying to turn Sanford's corner. He was always at home and never receptive to company. Sanford and linebacker teammate Shane Nelson, Randy McClanahan, and Tom Graham join forces with the best secondary in the National Football League. Third-year man Mario Clark showed a penchant for pass theft, leading the team with five. Charles Romes, who played only one year of college football, blossomed into a prototype corner. Safeties Doug Jones and Tony Green were wise in the ways of enemy receivers. It was a defensive quartet of different personalities, different styles. Green acrobatic. Jones dramatic. Clock opportunistic. Rome's chaotic. The personality of offensive linemen is easier to define. It is raw hostility. Four time All Pro Joe DeLamalore is the much-discussed immovable object. In 86 consecutive starts, DeLamalore owns more defensive scalps than an Apache raiding party. Number 67, Reggie McKenzie, is uncompromising and unyielding. He wears the battle stars of seven years in the pro football wars, 101 games without league. On the run, DeLamalore and McKenzie are an awesome armada. Little wonder the pulling guards and line mates Joe Devlin, Ken Jones, and Willie Parker win bravos from Terry Miller and Powell. Runners like Miller surface only seldom. A magical mix of speed, durability, and intelligence made him only the 10th rookie in professional football history to gain a 1,000 yards. He is by no means one-dimensional, as his total of 22 pass receptions tops among the Buffalo backs graphically illustrates. But the man's strong suit is the run, and he can run with anyone. The Buffalo ground game breathed new life, thanks to the presence of Miller and backfield teammate Curtis Brown. Choice of his peers, as the Bills' most valuable player, Brown added more than 1,100 all-purpose yards to the Buffalo total.
the Bills expect a long run of dividends from the partnership of Miller and Brown. Joe Ferguson has been a blue chip investment since the day he donned a Buffalo uniform six years ago. In 1978, Ferguson threw 16 touchdown passes to reach a career total of 78 and displace Jack Kemp as the Bills all-time leader. Frank Lewis caught seven scoring strikes. The swift grambling graduate had more pass receptions, gained more yards, and tallied more touchdowns than ever before in his pro career. Tight end Reuben Gant always seemed to find himself in the right place, the opponent's end zone. He made five TD grabs. Bob Chandler offers the standard by which to measure pro receivers. None, repeat, none can boast of 220 catches in the past four seasons. Chandler is part contortionist, part tightrope walker, and all football player. Can a player of only natural talent make these catches? Punt returner Keith Moody typified the special team's effort. For the third consecutive year, Moody returned a punt for a touchdown. His dandy 82-yarder versus Houston was climaxed by an end zone ritual with his own terrible towel. The Buffalo season took a strange turn after an unusual 5-0 win over the Bengals. Of their next seven games, Buffalo lost four by a total of 11 points. The force was in Foxborough as the Bills baffled the division-leading Patriots and led 24-23. With one tick on the clock, Buffalo jubilation turned to frustration. Was there no escape from this morass of misfortune? Against the Giants, Buffalo appeared headed for a fifth straight loss as New York galloped to a 17-7 lead. While the offense waited, the defense reached deep for new resolve and shut out the Giants the rest of the way. Buffalo needed points. Ferguson calling signals, Bills down 17-7. Joe has to find the combination. Drops back, hands off, inside to Roland Hooks. Hooks up the middle, hit, turns, twist. Hooks is free. Hooks down the right side at the 45. It's a foot race, and he's got a convoy. Looking for help, cuts inside. Roland Hooks heading for the end zone. Hooks dives toward the end zone, touchdown. Oh, wait a minute. The referee says he was stopped at the one-foot line. The Bills now trail 17-14, and Chuck Knox likes what he sees. Maybe, just maybe, the Bills can break it open. The Bills threatening again. Brown, going left, gets the blocking. Ernie Jones can't catch him. Touchdown, and the Bills take the lead, 21-17. Joe Ferguson drops straight back, looks over the middle. Fires, there's Bobby Chandler. He has it. Big catch of the day, Chandler trying to break free. Takes off a man, wait a minute. 
hit there by Jackson Fumble. Free ball, but Chandler recovers. Ferguson straight back, looks over the middle. There's Louis Pacon, stops, looks. And Pacon has it, touchdown! And for the first time this season, everything is coming together. What a day for Terry Miller. Blast over the linebackers. Jones bounces off. It's history. 35-17 Bills as he scores. Miller nearing 200 yards. Goes to the right. Miller will go for the touchdown. Terry Miller, 208 yards. Best individual performance in the NFL this year. And the most devastating ground game in the history of the Bills franchise. 366 yards rushing. Terry Miller needs only 60 yards against Baltimore to gain 1,000 as a rookie. The final score, Bills 42, New York 17. Baltimore, the finale, and still winless on the road. Colt quarterback Bill Troop found himself under siege by a Buffalo defense that bagged a season's high of four sacks. Terry Miller bolted past the 1,000-yard barrier with one mighty blast. In seven of the ten close encounters, Buffalo had to accept competitiveness as a consolation. But in Baltimore, the force smiled. Buffalo grew as a football team in 1978. Roots like character, poise, integrity reached deep. A growing process can't be hurried. It takes patience, understanding. But based on what he saw in 1978, Chuck Knox believes they will grow tall, straight, and strong. A football team, a force, and a future in 1979 and beyond.